everyone. I'm on the upper part of the Dimbongombe River on the ranch at the Africa Center for Holistic Management in Zimbabwe. And I'm standing in a spot which is an impossibility. So all of the uh, savory deniers out there, please don't watch any more of this video because this is an impossibility video. This may burst your paradigm bubble. Um, I'm surrounded by reeds. These are reeds are a symbol of, of a healthy riparian area. There's water moisture under my feet. Uh, just in the last few years, these pools and these reeds began showing up on what was otherwise a, 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 a patchy grassland with a, with a lot of hard packed uh, space between the grasses. Uh, now it's a wetland. It's been transformed. This is terraforming. There, this is this is reversal of desertification. The wetlands are going further upstream and they're getting wider and wider and there's more water and more reeds. They're changing the land, they're changing the water cycle and they're doing it with proper management of livestock, proper planning. That is, they're moving them in bunches according to a plan that only eats grass when it's ready. There's no overgrazing. They're kept in these corrals. They call them crawls here, K-R-A-A-L. Um, 500 of them in a single cor uh, corral for seven to ten days and then they move. They're constantly moving the corral. They're constantly moving the area that gets totally covered with dung and plant, plant litter and urine. So what's, they've been doing it for about ten years now. They move it every week. That's let's say for roughly 50 times a week. That's 500 times over the course of ten years that the corral has been moved. The corral is constantly moving. That's part of the practice. That takes work. A lot of people say holistic management won't work because it's, it's too much work. Well, yes, it takes work to reverse the desert, but it can be done. That's the point. And all the studies that are, that are quoted in the academic press that say uh, this don't work, those studies are miscast because those aren't studies of holistic management. They're studies of conventional uh, livestock management by any other name. So whether they call it short dur duration or high intensity or whatever they call it, it's still conventional because it's not planned grazing for ecological restoration with, with monitoring and adaptation to uh, conditions on the ground. There are many ways to do this wrong and we, the Western Range Science seems to be quite expert at that. There aren't many ways to do it right, but one of the ways that, that certainly does do it right is holistic management with planned grazing. They're doing it right here. They've completely transformed this 6, 000, about 7,000 acre ranch. It used to be uh, very patchy grassland with lots of areas of, uh, of bare, hard capped ground, and now there's no more bare ground. They can't find it. There's just complete grass cover every, everywhere, and then the riparian areas are getting healthier and healthier, and according to the, to the deniers, this is impossible. I can't be standing here surrounded by reeds. It's not, not with 500 cattle coming here and eating, but in fact, it's because of the cattle that, I, that the reeds are here at all. But the cattle are managed properly, and I wish the deniers could just get it through their head that there's a difference between managing improperly, which is the convention, and managing properly, which is the innovation. So we have an innovation. Let's put it to practice here in America, in South America, in Asia, in the quote-unquote fertile crescent. Let's put it to practice everywhere so we can restore land, capture carbon, improve water cycle, create food for people on land which uh, is not suitable for commercial agriculture, uh, make land more tolerant of drought, and, and avoid famine and the conflicts that come with famine. This is an innovation essential to our future as a species on this planet, and we need to think clearly about what's happening here and make the distinction between models of success and models of failure. This is a model of success. Let's concentrate on that so we can have a verdant and peaceful future with a stable climate. Thank you. See you, Paul.